Three, two, one. If I do those, if I do those deep plies, will my fanny look like that? Cross, Jad Cross. Here we go. Hey everybody, it's Tony Horton here, and I hope you've had your power life, and you're ready for this very exciting brand new episode. Now, since the last show, I've been skiing nonstop in Jackson Hole because I love it so very much, and there's deer and antelope and moose, and it's really beautiful. But sadly, the snow is melting, which brings me such great sadness. And the sun is starting to come out, which means the daisies are popping up. It's a whole thing about nature. And that means little old T. Horton is back with you for this amazing episode of Power Up. Now, you may know that before this whole fitness thing started, I was a aspiring actor and a wannabe comedian. So it is really, really cool. It's a blast for me to be talking to somebody who is so much funnier than I am. And my guest today is currently on her nationwide tour and her brand new stand-up special is called I'm Every Woman. And it's on Netflix right now. So when you're done watching this episode, please, I beg of you, if you like to laugh, go check it out. Are you ready? Drum roll. Welcome. The amazing Leanne Morgan! Oh, Thank you, hi, Tony, honey. Tony, Tony! Tony, Tony, Tony! <laughs> Leanne, Leanne, Leanne! Oh, uh, oh I don't want to jiggle. <laughs> okay, honey, I'm so tickled to be here. Thank you for having me. I, I, we were, when I found out you were coming, I was so thrilled. My wife is so madly in, madly in love with you. She is your new best friend, so prepared, be prepared for that. But you know what? You had an amazing journey. I mean, you sold jewelry, made people pee in their pants while they were, you were selling them jewelry. And then I love the fact that we'll get into that a little bit, the epiphany that you had, like, you know what? I made this woman pee on my couch while I sold her some rings. I think I'm going to be a professional comedian. Yeah. And the journey has been amazing. I mean, a lot, a lot like mine. I mean, you know, I was a C minus student with a speech impediment who did mime at the pier. And look at us now. Look at us now. Ta -da. We're doing all right. Yeah. And we're going to do a little bit of exercise that I know you're petrified. But there's no reason to be. Because I love exercise. I really do, Tony. But I have not. I've been on the road in. Mm. Um, in uh, car, rental cars and going and doing and and I and I am out of shape right now and I hate for you to see me this way and I uh, have a little allergy I have been oh. stopped up so I was worried I want to be pretty for you and I want to be able to breathe and I want to be able to do a squat <laughs> Well, here's what we're gonna do. Okay. Now, when I first started out in this biz, there was I was traveling all over the world, and a lot of times I would be in places where there was no equipment and it was cold and it was snowing and raining and terrible. But I came up with this little warrior workout or the traveler's workout. So you're a warrior and you travel. It's perfect for you. <laughs> oh, wonderful. We're gonna. So here's what it is, and, here, and we've done this before on this show, and we're gonna run you through it. So there's no reason to be scared. Okay. I mean, sometimes, you know, you go into a gym and there's stuff to do and it's a beautiful day and you go for a walk outside. But when you have a tiny little space, like you're in, let's say, for example, you get in trouble and they put you in a cell, you can still do this, all right? Oh, right? Yeah. So it's just a couple of push-ups anyway, you can do them. It's a little cardio for a little bit, right? And then we do some, some kind of ab thing. And then we do some lunges or squats. And you can typically do three rounds or as many as six rounds, depending on your time frame. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to Don't add? Don't ask me questions while I'm trying to do it. I won't. I won't. <laughs> I'll just inspire, motivate, and educate. <laughs> and you know, like you said, you've had a you've had a history of exercise, and you know the drill, and you and you did CrossFit, and my old stuff, and and jazzercise. I love to jazzercise. That's I do. Cool. I love a dance. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll throw that in. And I love weightlifting. I really do. But I right. I just have been inconsistent. Yeah. Well, that's the I think consistency. It's the hardest thing, staying motivated six days a week. One of the things that we spoke about actually beforehand, and this is for all of you as well, if you're having consistency issues and motivation issues, then you have to announce to the world that you need whatever 40 minutes to an hour, six days a week. On that seventh day, whatever, you know, you just relax and smoke cigarettes and drink your Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Wrong. That's the wrong answer. But for those six days a week, you tell everybody, your family, your friends, your coworkers, your manager, your, you know, the people on tour, I need this 40 minutes to an hour because Tony said so, because this will help my longevity, it'll help my quality of life, it'll give me more energy, it'll help me sleep better. Well, hello, hello, hello. I am here with Leanne Morgan. It's so exciting. This is where the exercise part comes and this is why I am doing what we're about to do. Now you travel the globe and you're everywhere and it's stressful and it's hard. And we all know, anybody who's looking in, that exercise is the linchpin to joy and happiness and success and longevity and health and beautiful skin 
and straighter teeth and greener eyes. <laughs> or not. <laughs> and sleep and... Sleep and, and everything, all right? And attitude and, and, be, all and be, Yeah, and all of that. Now, because you travel so much, it's hard because you go to a gym and it's all nasty and sweaty and filled with mildew and dust and you don't want to go in there. And then your room, oh, I don't want to do it there. But sometimes you're just stuck. And you know, as well as I do, because we had this conversation, a lot of folks that know at, at home know this as well, is consistency is the key. How do you stay motivated to be consistent? Well, for me, it's all about the science of exercise. The norepinephrine, the dopamine, the serotonin, the brain-derived neurotropic factor that releases inside your brain every time you move just a little. So this is the warrior slash traveler's workout. You're both of those, so perfect for you. So we don't, we don't need bands, we don't need weights, we don't, we need you, yay. We have gravity, earth, all right? And then we have uh, the floor, the, so that's all we need. Okay. So it's body weight stuff. And the sequence okay. is, I'm gonna work your upper body doing some push-ups. Same thing with you, all right? And you do whatever you can. And I don't like knee push-ups, I, I don't like them. So you're gonna go with wide feet, you're gonna go as deep as you can. If it's a millimeter, perfect. If it's half an inch, great. If you get two or three, fine. Getting your chest on the floor, that's for later, all right? As you progress and get better and keep practicing, the more you do, the better you get, right? Okay. And then after whatever, you can, if I want you to do 10 and you look at me and go, you suck, then do eight or seven, all right? Same okay. thing with everybody at home. That you can do anytime, anywhere, just schedule it, all right? Put it in your, in your schedule, tell the world, this is my 40 minutes, this is my half an hour, this is my hour, do not bother me, morning, noon, and night, whatever it is. Your next move is going to be a cardio move. Run in place, jumping jacks. You and I are going to throw some punches. I don't know what that was, but that was... It was something that I, I did in a, a club I in the a, 80s. Yeah, I added a little, uh, little jazz move in there. So we're going to do like 30 seconds on one side, 30 seconds on the other side. Then on your back, we're going to do simple bicycles. Bring the knees to the elbows. Okay. So up here, these are reps, 10 push-ups. Up here is... 30 seconds per side. On your back, 20 crunches, all right? And then we're gonna do those fun plie deep squats. Cause I like that, right? We're gonna go down, chest up, touch the floor, reach for the sky. 20 abs, 20 crunches, but let's do a little warm up first. Tony, <laughs> if I do those, if I do those deep plies, will my fanny look like yours? By mine? I, I, I think it's pretty keen. You're very kind. <sighs> my wife thinks so as well. Um, <laughs> And I don't mean that in an unbiblical way. I know. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so let's just do some little, little running in place. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Run around me like this. Like that. Mm -hmm. 10, 9, count down with me. 8, seven, seven, six, six, five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. Now we're going to do a little twist and pivot. So it's in and out. Watch the feet. Watch the, oh, you're good. You're good. You picked it up right away. Ready? And 10. Nine, Nine, let me hear you. Eight, eight seven, six, six five, four, four like the earth, going around the sun. Three, three two, two, and one. one. Nice, nice. Now we're going to bring up the knees really high. Put the hands here. Opposite knee, opposite oh. hand. Oh. Opposite. Opposite, yeah. Oh. Ten. Uh. Mm. Nine. Uh. Eight. Mm. Seven. Six. Five. five four. four Three, two, two one. one. I'm exhausted. Oh, no, but we have, we, have, we have to keep going. Now, we're going to do just a couple of those plie squats just to heat you up some more, and then we're going to get down to business, okay? All right. So we're going to face face like that. Oh, Lord. When I go down, you go down. When I come up, you come up. Keep it in, and stare at me the whole time. Okay. Don't take your eyes off me. <laughs> and I need to, do I need to pull my belly button Whatever you need to do. Back to towards the, my. Into your spine. My, okay. Yeah. Ready? One. We're only gonna do five of these. Two. How low can you go? Oh, not very Three low. for that beautiful bootay. One. Four. And five. On the deck, young lady. Hands lined up with your shoulders, feet, feet oh, wide. Oh, I'm doing that. You're I'm doing, doing, doing them. them. You're doing them. This oh, is, it's actually happening. Okay. So, Leanne, for you and all those that are watching, I don't like the knee push ups. So, put your feet super wide, wider than the mat. Wider move, than the mat? Yeah, move your shoulders forward a quarter inch so your body comes this way. Hands stay where they are. There. Now, how many times do you think you can hit my hand? I don't know. Tell Let's me. find out. Upper chest of my hand. Ready to go. There's one. Do it again. And there's two. 
Okay, three, and breathing, and four. These seem awfully easy for you. Five, and six. You're nice and straight, that's nice. Seven, eight, nine, do two more. 10, 11, and 12. Good, perfect, that's done. That is the first exercise in the first round. You can do three or five or six or seven rounds of these. Now, come with me. You stand there, you stand there. So here we're gonna raise the heart rate up a little bit, all right? So put your left foot forward. You're gonna put your hands up high, jab, cross. Make sure you, you turn that back hip when okay. you feel that cross. Right? And you go fast or slow as you want. The faster you go, the more calories you burn, the more sexy you are, the sooner you wanna be. Oh, Lord. Whoa! Okay. All right, you ready? Okay. And I'll do them with you. Three, okay. two, one, jab, cross. Jab, cross. Here we go. One, two, just like that. Drive it out. Hurt that person. They are mean. Smash them in the face in a really positive, nice way. One, two, driving the hip. I love that you're oh, on the ball. So keep going. I'm listening to you and your mic and they lie up. <laughs> and, yeah, that breathing is wonderful. Love it. Keep turning. Another eight seconds. Seven, six, good. Five, keep it coming. Four, I love the body twist here too. Switch feet right away, other side, you and me. Here we go, hands up. One, two, here we go. Feeling good, jab and cross, knock them out. Add a smile, tell a joke. You don't have to, <laughs> keep it going. Just like that. I love the twisting and the turning. Everybody at home, you see this knee, you see that, how the twisting, she's a pro. That's it, really nice. You got three more, oh. jab, cross, doesn't have to be I perfect. I gotta protect my face. That's all right. And time. Good, right? A little breath. See, right now, well, here's what's happening. All the cells in the brain are starting to go, whoa, this is good. I mean, a lot of people get up and drink a bucket of coffee, and then later in the day, they have headaches. Here, you're using ox oxygen as the means in which to make things alive. On your back, feet here, head there. Now, we're gonna do these together. I'll do them on the ground. All right, so high. So here's the move. It's this elbow, that knee, and this okay. leg extends out straight. All right, every time you do one, I count the number. Ready, go. And one, and two, and three, and four. How's it going? Five. Okay. Six, what's happening? Seven, eight, keep it coming. Nine, you're halfway 10. 11, so good 12. 13 makes me happy. 14, 15, makes you breathe. 16, 17, you have more than 20. 18, tell me. 19. 25. 20, yeah, I want more is better. Two, and three. And four, and five. Lovely. Come on up. Got you. Now we're gonna do that, that plie squat thing. All right, so this is where the rubber hits the road. The rubber her, her is gonna hit the road. Off camera. Her daughter's off camera and they are loving this. Lowered so, my leggings. Okay. So. Okay, you're gonna, all right. 20 of these is a lot. All right, but we're gonna break it. Here's what I do. When I have an exercise that seems daunting, I break it up in groups. So we're gonna count the five four times. Three, two, one, down, yeah, that's one. Chest up, oh. booty down, two, there's a hard, three, there you go, that is four, <laughs> stare me down, five, and, you and that's the first five, those are gone, isn't that fun? Oh, cool. Four. Yeah. Oh. Two, yeah, good, three, chest it's up at the bottom, Ryan. four, no, it's actually very good. I Wait, bet that's, it's that's not. That's half length, look at that. Oh. We got, yeah, we got, here comes the next five, there's number two, Right, there's number three, chest up, booty down. Oh. Four, 15, I love that face, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Five, down, four, down, three, down, two, down, one. See, see, no, no. I'm out of breath, no. Tony. Notice what's happening. That's good. Notice what's happening. Meditation, breath work, really important. It gets all that brain stuff going without having to move physically, which is great. That's why mindfulness and breath work and meditation are more popular than ever. But what you're doing is 10 times more than that because you're adding the physicality to it. You don't have to think about your breath because when you're in the middle of those, you can't think about traffic or taxes or what kind of crazy crap your daughter said to you today. All right? You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And so we did one round, everybody. If you're on the road, no matter where you are, you've told the world, I need this time, leave me alone, you can do that three more, two more times. That's the minimum, right? That'll keep you about 
15 minutes worth of exercise. You see how fast that went? Yeah. See how relatively painless it was? Yes. But all this deep breathing, all this oxygen, oxygen in, right? Carbon dioxide out. That combination lightens up the, uh, the, the, the brain, um, your creativity goes up, your sleep improves. It's just magic, all right? And so this is a no excuser. If you can't do this, some version of this, six times a week, you just don't care, all right? And if you can, you know, and so maybe the next one, you do a push up with your hand, one hand forward, one hand back. On the next cardio thing, you run in place or you do jumping jacks or you do back kicks over and over for your booty. Just be creative because you have a fitness background. It's super easy for you, but it's always a push up for some kind. And by the way, if you have an, uh, bands around and you want to do pulls or something, great, but you might not have that. Just if it's just you and your hotel room and the floor, that's your number one option. You can also here, stay here for a second. If you want to be creative, just to give everybody at home an, uh, an idea, one hands and four. So this elbow is going to go back. This one's going to go out. That's a different kind of push up. And then you switch, right? So you're using a little proprioception balance. Boom. All right. You can also be even more creative. You can go down sidearm balance, right? You go down sidearm balance. Oh, There's lower a million counting. things you can do here. Okay. You can do ones with your fingers together. Different, more tricep and shoulders, okay? There's a lot of ways to be creative. Same thing with the ab stuff. You can do bicycles, you can do scissors, you can do anything you want. All right, it doesn't have to be the exact four things every time, or it can be like, I don't wanna think today. Do the same thing three times, I'm gonna get on, go about my day, all right? Okay. I'm excited for you. Life is good. Thank We're you, friends for life, whether you like it or not. We are. Right? We should go on vacation again. Let's do it. I know. Outlet I know. shopping. Can we bring these two with us, though? Yeah, we can. They seem totally fun. They are so fun. You did My good. Thank you, you did good, Honey, and you did good today here on this. You motivate, Tony. Oh, well, you know. All right, if I, if in, you said do this three months, that I, you, I don't be able to tell a difference in energy, sleeping. Everything. And by the way, this is just baseline, right? If you have a chance to go walk in the hills, you walk in the hills. If you have a chance to get on some kind of piece of equipment because you're at a hotel and they have it, do it, all right? Variety, variety, variety is also the key because variety helps you avoid boredom, injuries, and lack of results over time, AKA plateaus, all right? I mean, that's with me, like, oh, I'm gonna do a ninja. Like my workout tonight, eight machines, cardio, one hour, three minutes each. So I'm on the treadmill three minutes, then I get on the rower three minutes, then I jump rope three minutes, then I get on my ski machine three minutes, then I get on my slide board three minutes, then I get on the verse climber three minutes, then I get on the bike three minutes, then I hit the bag three minutes. It's just more interesting. So if you have availability at a gym, right, and you see different kinds of cardio, do five, 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 do three, 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 three. When I had Steven Stills, we did a minute. Coach, I don't wanna do, I don't wanna do more than a minute. Okay, Steven. I mean, whatever works. Yeah. It's the consistency yeah. is more important than intensity. Intensity comes with time as your body adapts to it. All right, like the fact that I can go through a ninja course at 65 is because I could barely climb up a rope when I started and I was a fit guy. You always want to try to introduce as many new things as possible. You want to be awful often until you're not. And then you go find something else to be awful at until you're not. And then all of a sudden, good <laughs> You know what I mean? I want to be that. Yeah, you got the, by the way, you have the expertise, you have the knowledge, you need to stop judging. A lot of us judge the journey, don't oh, judge no. the journey. Just be okay with what is, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I injured my ribs, right? So I, my, my workout yesterday, awful. I go, oh, guys, oh, gee, oh, you know what I mean? But I did what I could, and I'll come back another day. Yeah. Till, the, till you're 109 with me and we hang out. I know, fine. Yeah, yeah. I want to go. You car. killed it. We're gonna, we're gonna talk more. Hey everybody, that's all you need to know. Leanne Morgan! <laughs> Hello, power people, it is I, Tony Horton. You might know me from some of my past workout programs and my sports supplement brand, Power Life. 
Now, I've trained some of the biggest stars on the planet, from rock stars to action heroes. But between now and when I'm in my hundreds, I want to live large, I want to take charge, I want to feel good. And you can do it too. Oh, but Tony, I've never exercised a day in my life. Look at yourself in the mirror, and if it's not going the way you want to go, I'm here to help you do it, because I can. Anybody can do it. And if you're willing to take charge and feel good about your life, I don't care if you're 40 or 50 or 60 or 70, it can be done. All you got to do is train, and you've got to consume the right things to fuel your body so you have the energy and enthusiasm to show up day after day day after day. Trust me, it can happen. Do you really want me to flex? So let me tell y'all, I've done every kind of exercise in the world and I'm back to doing Zumba because I want to have fun and I don't want anybody to yell at me and cuss me at a boot camp. I'm sick of that. <laughs> I did CrossFit for years. Uh, I know y'all got CrossFit. Well, they came to Knoxville and opened up a gym and it was these young kids that looked like movie stars and their little fannies looked like baseballs. It was young boys in their 20s and I wanted my fanny to look like a baseball. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, drum roll please. <laughs> How about a horn? I am here with Leanne Morgan. You were great in the workout, by the way. I know you Thank were you. mildly scared. I was very but scared. But you, did you not surprise yourself? I surprised myself, yeah. and I'm so glad I didn't vomit. And I tried <laughs> that would have been fun, though, I for the people I tried to do angles where, you know, yeah. my stomach went laying on my legs, but I know it was probably there, but that's okay. You're a Everything's pro. Everything's okay. You're a pro. But now, you. now you have some information you didn't have before. Right. Right. Anytime, anywhere, tell the people you need your 45 minutes or whatever, and you just hit the deck. And if, like I said, if you have other options, you have other options. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm excited for your future, and I can't wait. My wife and I are going to sit home, we get the popcorn out, get the, the non-glycemic carbonated <laughs> beverages out. <laughs> I love that I'm making you laugh. That's like my favorite thing. What is and good? cut. We're done. <laughs> this thing is done. Um, your journey is, is not, not exactly like mine, but very similar. Like your success now is coming later in life, mm -hmm. and I think as a result, like myself, you're just really appreciating it. All right. Uh, I, I mean, you know, you're touring the country. You got a, you got a, a Netflix special. I mean, come on. Uh, no. Isn't that like, how does that all that feel? Like, what does that feel like? <laughs> Knowing where you've come from, you sold jewelry and you made people laugh. And then you went, ah, oh, I think I want to be a stand up comic. And now kaboom. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm a mom. I've got three children and I married their daddy. I met their daddy at the University of Tennessee. We, he moved me to Bean Station, Tennessee, which is in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. But from the time I was, I'd say 10, probably, I wanted to be in Hollywood. And I wanted to be, I knew I was gonna be a performer. And my mm. little mama, Lucille, would say to me, you're gonna be like Marilyn Monroe because you've got blonde hair all over your body and it photographs well. <laughs> and in my mind, I kept thinking I was gonna be the it girl, but any, I wanted to be a Hollywood movie star. But um, you know, I was raised in a farming community of 500 people. Anyway, I go on to college, I meet their daddy, because I, I wanted to be a mama. He moves me and up to this um, rural, rural area where some people didn't even know who the president was. Whoa. Uh-huh, and uh, he had a used mobile home business that refurbished mobile homes and then resold them. And I wanted to I breastfeed my first baby, and uh, but I wanted a little money to get my hair highlighted. And he had his own business. We were in our 20s. And mm -hmm. so I started selling jewelry, like women sell Mary Kay. Hmm. But I look back on it, because I kept thinking I'm going to be a stand-up. Before I, my husband and I married. Even we then, you're selling jewelry, yes. I'm going to be a stand-up. Yeah. I'm going to I Hollywood. Thought, I I, it's, yeah, and I, it, when I was at the University of Tennessee, I tried to take a theater class. Like, I always was... I'd, but I'd never gone to a comedy club. I just didn't know what to do. But my husband and I came out here on a trip, and I went. I said, I want to go to the comedy store. And I got to see Paul Mooney, Dom Herrera, all these people at the comedy store. And I remember thinking the whole time, I'm going to do that. I can do that. I know I'm going to do it. I don't know how. I don't know when. Damn. So I'm 27. I have my first baby. And one of my friends was selling this jewelry like women sell Mary Kay and Tupperware. And she said, you can, you can meet people up in the Appalachians because I didn't know anybody. And you can, um, you know, Chuck can take care of the baby at night and 
you can be with the baby during the day, you can make a little money. And I look back on it now, and I was in women's living rooms, and it was my demographic. It was like the perfect comedy club, if you think about it. Mm. And I was supposed to be talking about jewelry, and instead I talked about breastfeeding and hemorrhoids and how I resented my husband because he didn't hear the baby crying in the night. And women thought I was funny. And I remember saying, I just felt like it, I knew it in my heart what was going to happen. And I remember saying to them, you can book a jewelry party with me now or you can see me in Las Vegas later. I, it's up to y'all. I started booking a year in advance. The company noticed and asked me to start speaking at their big regional and national things. Oh. And so then I would, I would, I was breastfeeding one of these babies back here on a toilet in Opryland Hotel in Nashville. <laughs> And then I would hand her to my mama, and then I would get up and, and be in front of these all these women that sold this jewelry. And I was talking about breastfeeding and hemorrhoids instead of jewelry. And these women would come up to me afterwards and say, you could be a stand-up, you need to be, a, that you're so funny. And it gave me the courage. So then my husband sold that business. We moved to San Antonio, Texas, and I had a comedy club for the first time. And they were, my children were three, five, and seven. And I started driving back and forth to Austin, um, Cap City Comedy Club, which was one of the best comedy clubs in the United States. Mm. Dennis Miller from Saturday Night Live, his brother Rich Miller owned it. Mm. And they believed in me and lifted me up and moved me from opener to headliner for the first time in their history. Whoa. And, and they- and you skipped all those steps in between. I kind of did. Now, wait a minute. So think about, when you, here's what's interesting about your story. You were in people's homes and you were funny and somebody noticed because you were killing it. And so you had that really cool stepping stone of being able to be on stage with the same organization, talking about jewelry a little bit, but mostly throwing up in hemorrhoids. Yeah. But that, that, that was like, oh, I'm on stage now. And I'm making all these other strangers, not a bunch of gals in the living room, laugh. Is that the moment where you went, yeah, 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 this, yeah. this is time. Yeah. So when you did that, how did you end up in Texas? I mean, how did that go? You just, you just he sold his business and you just decided to, you just did an open mic night there? Or I something? did an open mic night. And, and how that, was that first open mic night? I felt like I was going to faint. It was three minutes. I thought I was going to die. And the manager came up to me and said, um, you don't have to do this anymore. We're gonna <laughs> right move, away. We're like going to move you to opener. So there were, there were some times in there where I was opener feature. But right. I, I think I jumped up quick because I was just different. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of comedians, and I love all types of comedians. I like blue. I don't, you know, I'm a clean comedian, but mm -hmm. I, I love Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock. I'm a big fan of all of Bill Burr. But I mm -hmm. think, and when you're in comedy clubs, and there's a lot of men in comedy clubs, they all talk, you know, kind of about the same stuff. And then I would get up there in a floral capri with a kitten heel and talk about my children somebody do do on a t-ball field <laughs> and i had to get a stick and flick it into the woods so another child wouldn't step on it well i was just different right. and i was unique and they and people noticed and right. so i got on i mean you know there were i mean let me say for 22 years i've been doing this mm. and there were times i couldn't get arrested nobody cared then there would be other times where i would have a television deal with abc and warner brothers or tv land and nick at night um one of my writers one of the showrunners for one of my sitcoms was matt williams that created roseanne and home improvement wow. so i always had moments through 20 years where it would be like don't quit Look, you know, this, even though those television shows didn't make it. Right, right. There were lots of no's. There were lots of, you can't do this. You've got three babies. I had, and one of my dear friends, Brian Dorfman, who is now one of my concert promoters, on Zany's Comedy Club and clubs across the United States and, and um, big deal in comedy business. And he said to me, when I started 20-something uh, years ago, he said, Lynn, you cannot do the traditional club thing, you've got three babies. Roseanne raised hers in a station wagon in a comedy club parking lot, and it, I don't think it's turned out well. Now, I don't know what's happened with, I don't know. I don't right. want to judge her. Right. But he was right. I remember it making me mad and thinking, mm -hmm. you don't know what I can do, I'm gonna do it. But I look back on it, and I could not have raised these children to be who they are mm -hmm. if I'd gone out on the road then. So I had to find a different path. So I did. I'd get on little tours with other female comedians and we would do little theaters and, or I would do private fundraisers for breast cancer. 
or, right, right. you know, I'm your girl in Knoxville, Tennessee. Mm. If you need somebody to do a fundraiser or a corporate thing, you know, and I did a lot of corporate things all over the United States. You then paid I, your dues. I paid my dues. It may not be a traditional comedy route, but I was, I would work so many clubs a year, maybe five, mm. and then I'd fill in with what I could. Hmm. But I, but they were my priority. Raising children, I put them. And I, I met two first. out of three. I mean, that third one is probably the rogue one. I don't know. <laughs> but they're just wonderful, and they're Thank smart, you. and they're, Thank you. and they're, they're, they seem very present. And it, you know, I mean, they look you straight in the face. So you, you know what I mean. They, and especially you, a lot darling. of young kids today are all over the block, as my friend from New York would say. <laughs> These kids are over the block, you know what I mean? But they're not. They're just, they, they're, they're as wonderful as you are. Now, Thank now you, my I, I have some other questions. We're going to do a speed round. Okay. Now, these were lined up because of your daughters. All right. All okay. Right. This, is their, this is their sequence. Um, you've got a pretty eclectic resume as a stand-up comedian, jewelry designer. Um, what was your first job ever? Ever. In comedy or Ever. Ever. Waiting tables Wait. at a seafood restaurant. Me too. Boom. There you go. I love right. waiting tables. I feel like I could wait them now if I could wear a compression hose. I think that I could. I can't <laughs> remember too. my name, but I can remember what people have ordered. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Loved the food business. Yeah. Loved it. And me too, because when I came out here, I worked out. I was a waiter at the Bel Air Country Club, you know, waiting on all these big celebrities. It was, really, it was exciting, you know, because you're, you're in your 20s. And that's so, nifty. Right, and you get, the, you get the cash at the end of the night, not too bad. I know. Yeah, so. That's I didn't good. get to wait I on knew celebrities. We had that, I knew we had that in common. Uh, here's a good one. When I did stand-up for four and a half minutes back in the old days, I was blue. I picked blue. I did a bit that my wife won't even let me talk about out loud. I was a mime, so I did a, I did a pantomime menage a trois. <laughs> on stage with Rage Against the Machine playing in the background, full blast. It was like, you know, it was like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, then, and then more. It just, because, I don't know, I didn't have the skill or the, t I mean, I had friends. We had a little skull session and it was my little comic friends and we'd do these open mic nights and we'd do these little, you know, these little uh, showcases and stuff. But whatever, that was my way. Why did you decide clean from the get-go? Just because that's your nature? Because well, I get a sense that like, you, you didn't need to be blue, right? Well, that I do think because I was a mama, there, it's all, I've always, I never wanted to say anything that I didn't want them to say. Hmm. I felt like I'm their mama. Right. I need to be an example for them. Right. I think dirty. I do, I, and, I, and I use innuendo, and I talk about prostitute myself to their daddy so that they could have nice shoes. So you find the edges I, t I find an edge, and yeah. I go around it. Right. I talk about, because um, their daddy's got a lot of testosterone in place tennis, I've had to do you know, unspeakable things for 30 years with him. So I talk about stuff, but I just don't use language. Right, I right. mean, which is, I used Which to is your genius, though. Oh, thank you, my That daughter. is your genius. And by the way, I when know. I get up and do my thing, there's no reason for me to use profanity in any way, shape, or form. Because what happens is, if you're skilled, like you and, say, Seinfeld, right, uh, you find the funny without having to cut corners. And by the way, you know, I like, like you said, I like blue comedians too, but um, it just shows your skill level and that you appeal to a greater audience. If you can make everybody laugh without having to use profanity, I think you have an, you have an advantage over people. Well, and thank you, my angel. And let me tell you, one of the most special, the, of the, that's what's happened for me, uh, when this blew up, and it was probably around 2019, hmm. I would go to comedy clubs. I was selling out all over the United States, and then I got the, my first tour, the Big Panty Tour. Now that I'm on my second big tour called Just Getting Started Tour, but, um, I, they, I would be in these clubs, and they would have a grandmother, an 80-year-old woman, her 50-something-year-old daughter, and then her 25-year-old daughter. So three generations would come and, and see And they're me. in the front row. Yeah, and they said, and they said, mm. we've we've never, we just don't see this. You know, right. where three generations can come and enjoy the same. I know, it's and I what, didn't yeah. even plan it that way. So it's very special. Mm. It really is, mm. and it's. And it's more than comedy. It people, these women, and I and I told you this before we came on here. I've hit a lane, a niche of people that feel ignored. It's your everyday woman out in the middle of the United States mm -hmm. that kind of Hollywood ignores. Right. right. And I, they feel like I'm their voice. Mm. And they and when they see me, they go, I feel like we'd be best friends. I know we'd be best friends. I felt that when I met you. Thank you. Absolutely. My Thank you. We're gonna make magic together. You're gonna get so. Beautiful. I'm going to be a little are. bridges. <laughs> I 
love it. Um, tell me now, you got this new Netflix special. Yeah. I know, is that not crazy? Crazy. Oh, my, my wife and I will just scan Netflix for comedy. <laughs> we'll just do like one after another after another. You know what I mean? And we can't wait. We're going to see yours tonight. So um, it's called I'm Every Woman. Tell me about the title of that. Why, why I'm Every Woman. Um, well, I love the Whitney Houston song, I'm Every Woman. Do you mm. remember that in that video when oh, Shaka Khan she, and everybody her, her was and TLC yeah, and everybody yeah. was doing? Whitney Houston and Zeppelin, they were my two go-tos. Not the truth. But I, th I love that video when, when and she was pregnant. And, and mm. you know, I just feel like I'm, I'm, I've been through it all. Yeah. I talk about being yeah. a mama, yeah. having a husband, going to Weight Watchers, failing. Mm. Going to CrossFit with Church of God Becky, my friend who, you know, I tell her what to do and she'll do it. I, mm. But all those things that I talk about, every woman goes through them. Right. And I just, and people have said to me for 20 years, when I get off stage, they go, oh my gosh, that is my husband. Oh my gosh, that is my daughter. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is me and my friend. And so um, I just felt like that was a good title for that. Because it represents you and your life. And it also resonates with everybody watching. I think so. Kind of, kind of perfect. Uh, so what, what can we expect in this special? A lot of storytelling. Yeah. I'm a storyteller. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I talk about my kids, my husband, but my grandbaby. I've got a grandbaby that mm. I'm in love with. Mm. Oh. And, um, What's his name? Charles Boy. Wilbur. Charles Wilbur. Charles Wilbur. He's named after two great granddaddies. Oh. And what's so special and amazing and wonderful about Charles Wilbur? Oh my gosh, his teeth, he <laughs> smells good, he's funny. We all he's used got to smell like that, by the way. We all used to smell like that. <laughs> he's sweet, he's, he's just like being with, he's just like his daddy, that is my boy, my oldest, mm. 29, mm. Charlie, who has been from heaven all of his life, mm. a precious son, and fun and outdoorsy. And, and he's the oldest. He's the oldest. Oldest and only boy with two younger sisters. Uh-huh. And they worship him, and he worships Same like, as me. I'm the oldest and do, only boy with two younger sisters. Do they take care of you? Do they tend to they, you? Wanna... We, yes, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're a trio, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get they're along, very close. We get too. along like gangbusters, yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm sure that's what's going to happen with, uh, with your, your young in there. I um, so I hear that you're working on your very first book. Can you tell us a little something about it? And what's that process like? Because I, I remember when I wrote my first book, I was like, you know, move the deadline up, move the deadline up. That was kind of me because I was busy as well. The last book, though, just popped out of me. You know, I had three. And I've got a fourth one that's been, you know, sitting in a folder for four years, maybe one day. But how about you? How's that going the first time? Um, it's very daunting, mm -hmm. but it's more, it's like funny short essays, which mm -hmm. is that's good for yeah, me, yeah. but I wanted it when it when I have somebody helping me because I'm you know yeah, yeah. you need an editor I, in my eighties I wasn't paying attention to school right. yeah okay so she um, <laughs> I just told her everything we've got a wonderful chemistry yeah and I told her all the horrible things I ever did in the eighties all the horrible decisions I ever made people I dated people you wouldn't wipe your feet off <laughs> and, and my. Uh, literary agent who is a doll and so funny, Albert, he goes, honey, um, you're not Joan Crawford yet. He said, let's keep it as some funny short essays to mm. introduce Lee and Morgan to the world. So mm. that's what we're doing. And I'm calling it What in the World? Because every day mm. that this has happened to me, I think, what in, in the, the world? world? Because it is one miracle after another mm. happening to me at 57 years old mm. and a grandmother for this to be. I'm Africa, Nate Bargadze, Taylor Tomlinson, Fortune Feimster, Burt Kreischer, Sebastian Maniscalco. So, Mal Maniscalco, too. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Tell him I'm a big fan when you see him. I will. Him. You? I will. Yeah, is yeah. he not darling funny? He is, makes me. Sean he I, works out. He could I come know. in here and do yeah. all this. I want him. I want the two of you at my house before the end of the oh, year. Fun. Yeah. Mm. Well, oh, fun. But this happened to me at 57 years old. And, mm. and, and more things are happening that I can't say yet. So fun. But, but the book coming out, a second tour, I mean, it's just mm. crazy. Mm. You're blessed. Thank you. And I am. And I it, am. And it's also because you worked for this hard for this. You know what I mean? And your head's on straight. You know what I mean? You don't veer. A lot of people are veering. Oh, that was two years in the wrong direction. Oh, that was two years. 
or this is what I get the sense out of you. You're just like full steam ahead because you appreciate it at this age. You didn't, you know, in your 20s, like, yeah. Oh, whoa, if it had happened, you know? if it had happened in my 20s, I'd be yeah. in you a ditch. You probably wouldn't have kids. Oh, and if you honey. did, they'd all be in jail. Oh, I yeah. was lost and flailing. And yeah, it, me too. I, it would have not me been too. good. Me it would too. have not been good. But yeah. now, good Lord, I'm a grandmother. Yeah. And, you know, I, I want to, if I make any money, I spend it on a playground for that grandbaby. Mm. I'm yeah. getting him a big one, honey. A big one. Mm. Because we got another boy coming. I got another boy coming. From your same son? Uh-huh. They got they're pregnant with their second baby. How old how old is the the, the He's most... um 24 27 months. Oh, okay. He's gonna have a little brother oh. to just push around, beat up. No, I won't. We've never had brothers, so we're wow. we're excited. Wow. And my son is very outdoorsy and fly fishes. We're near the Smoky Mountains. Mm. So he hikes and kayaks and so he's gonna raise these baby camping outside. Oh. Can I come? Uh, yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. Stand up tour, podcast, books. You're killing it, apparently, at this ripe young age, because you're still a youngster compared to me. You know, you've achieved a lot, which is uh, kind of amazing. So I know you can't talk about everything. But hopes and dreams and projects for the future. I mean, do you want your own show? I would like to have. Well, I say that, Lord, if you if you can get me in good enough shape, I'm going to have stamina to do it. Because you know it's like 14-hour oh, days. Oh, it's brutal. It's brutal. But, I wouldn't know. But, but that was my dream mm. when I started comedy, because I was raised on Jerry Seinfeld, Ray Romano, Roseanne. Yeah. So I wanted to be a sitcom star. That was my dream. Mm. And, you know, I've had four deals for sitcoms. And, and after that first one, I, that was my first rodeo and thought it was really going to happen. And then now, you know, with the fourth one, I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, believe, but, I believe it when it's in, in, <laughs> yeah. in syndication. Yeah. But but now live touring is so wonderful that it'd be hard for me to take the time to do it. But they're mm. talking to me about it. And I don't know. I mean, I think it, I still think I would like to do it. Well, right. You're doing now. Second tour. First book. These are the building blocks to get there. More and more people are going to hear about you and see you and talk about you. And brrr, the word goes out. And, the, you know, meeting you is a, is a is part of that. Well, you angel. You know what? I, really, my dream would be is if I could be the female Steve Harvey. Oh. I would like to have my own talk show because people tell me stuff. Mm -hmm. I, if I was not going to be a comedian, I wanted to be a child and family uh, therapist. Mm. And I got my degree in crisis intervention counseling. And people tell me stuff. Like, I've been, I've had shows where women come up and say, my husband robbed a pizza hut and I've got three children, you know, and I'm holding them and they're straddling me. <laughs> so I, and I want people to tell me things. Yeah. So I think I, if someday I had a, uh, my own talk show, uh, I do think I could do a game talk, show. Talk show or, or sitcom. Would you, well, what would you maybe would you, talk show. Cause I want, can talk Oh, okay. and I don't have to learn a line. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if, yeah. and I don't have to think, okay, but, and I can just God, roll around and talk like, and straddle and kiss yeah. and hug. But right. if, um, and I also think I could do a game show if it didn't require math. Yeah. And I think I could do a food show. I think I could cook and mm, talk and, mm. and do. Yeah, I think, well, I did a, my first movie where I was uh, this summer. Not that it's about me, but learning that I had a big old three page monologue within a, oh my God. I thought I, I was trembling. I, can, I was in front of 26,000 people in New Orleans, but you know, I'm in front of a small crew and six other actors. I thought I was gonna burst, so a talk show. See, that makes me feel like yeah. I'm gonna have diarrhea. Yeah. Even you telling me that. Uh, I, I, something about I that know, is frightening. But here's the thing. Like I called my wife the night before. I hate this, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I agreed to it. I got a pretty nice normal life. Why did I, <laughs> why did I wanna push the envelope? When I got through that scene, and everybody was like, oh my God, dude. I was, I called my wife, I changed my mind, this was amazing. I pushed the envelope beyond, beyond what I thought I could do. So I wouldn't say no. I mean, you never know, look what, you're, look, look what you've done so far. You know what I mean? You've broken so many rules. Your story is amazing. You, you know, how, what you've been able to accomplish, what's in the, the lineup for you. There could be a point where those synapses are in the brain are activated because they have to be because okay here's you know here's how many here's how much money we want to give you and this sounds really cool and i don't have to tour anymore write any books this is where i'm going to put my energy anyway i'm not predicting the future but it could be an amazing thing but a talk show you're right it's so much easier and better okay so how did you meet your husband uh at the university of tennessee oh well he was getting in an class, MBA, walking, no. walking through the quad Wait, tables 
He was a waiter too? Uh-huh. He had just come through with the new batch of people that were gonna train, and I was standing up against the wall waiting for my tables to be set. set. And he, I, he's real tall, 6'4", mm -hmm. and I said, oh, you're uh, tall as a tree or something like that. And he went, sorry, and I thought, oh, another butthole's come to work at Grady's. <laughs> and that's the first thing we send each other. And then he's very introverted and very quiet. And, and then I, all of a sudden he started stalking me and buying me gifts. I mean, like I, he also said to me, because he had lost a bunch of weight, he was a frat guy and had gained a bunch of weight because they had a cook named Weimer and she cooked fried chicken and he ate all that and drank beer and went through all that. Then he lost like, I don't know, 30 pounds, 40 pounds. He looked like a praying man. It's by the time he came oh. to wait tables where I was, well, we were having a meeting with, uh, with the managers, you know, a shift meeting. And I was eating a big old loaded potato with cheese and chives and, and bacon. Sour cream and butter. And, and he said, this was the second thing he ever said to me. You don't need to be eating all that fat. He had a baked this, potato with this? cottage cheese on it. What? This was in, um, this would have been in 89 or 90. And what, what part of the country were you in? Yeah. Knoxville, Tennessee. He must have been an absolute anomaly compared to everybody else in the Oh, in, in, he in was this big around. He was running all the time. He's very wow. he likes to play tennis and athletic. Mm. And he and he's smart. I'll give him that. But he said to me, if somebody's trying to date you, you don't go, you don't need to be eating that big <laughs> gobba. And he was eating his cottage cheese. He'd put a little cottage cheese in his baked potato. And I remember thinking, he is so not fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next thing I know, like Bonnie Raitt was playing over the inter the thing, and I said, oh, I love her new album. He had a CD waiting for me with a bow on it. And then and then I said, oh, girl, I love your Dooney and Burke purse. And I had a new Dooney and Burke purse at my apartment. And he knew what that was. He wooed me. And he mm. was in MBA school, and I was living with, I was sharing an apartment with two guys that were my good friends. I was on the uh, top part. We shared a kitchen. They lived in the basement. And they uh, were just my really good friends. And one of them was in MBA school with him and was also a fraternity brother. And he would come over and do MBA projects with them. And, and he never would say a word to me, but bought me things. And, and I said, oh, shrimp sounds good. And he, he got his grill and, and uh, went up two streets, pulled it so that he could grill me shrimp. He wooed me. And he wanted me so badly. And, and so did you, how, me. How, when did you went, oh, this might be the dude. Well, I had been through something horrible with somebody else mm. that had really been mean. And I had gone, I had married, I had married, dropped out of UT. I'll just tell you, Tony, I dropped out of UT. I had married somebody that was abusive and mean and all that. Mm. I got a divorce at 23 years old. So I married at 21, which was stupid for me. I mean, I knew I was making a terrible mistake. Anyway, mm. I think what I was doing, I look back on it. And I think that I didn't know what I wanted. I knew I wanted to go to Hollywood. I didn't know how. I knew I wasn't supposed to be there. And I was in college because my parents wanted me to go. And I was flailing. I didn't know, you know, what to do. And I married him to get out of it. Uh, and then, so anyway, we get divorced. I'm 23, a divorced woman. I go to wait tables at this place. Feel like my life is over. I feel like I'm 100. Mm. And I'm in therapy and all that. And mm. then Chuck Morgan swoops in. And, it makes me want to cry because he wanted to save me. And he wanted to show me that, you know, he would take care of me. And, had, me and I, now. you know, and so, mm. it, so I married Chuck Morgan and had these three precious children. Please. And through this whole thing, even though he's very introverted and very quiet, and very analytical, has had a, he's an executive at a company and he's very, uh, we've got to have health insurance and da, 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 and see, I'm the dreamer. Mm. And I told him after I had my third baby, I go, we need to sell everything and move to LA. I can make it. I know I'm going to be a star. And he was like, are you crazy? <laughs> we've got to have health insurance. And he was right. Because right. I think if I'd have done that, if we'd have done that, it wouldn't have been the right timing. Right. But he's always supported me, mm. would take care of these, you know, oh, I've got them, you go. Even though he's very, it's hard for him to, even accept what's happened now, because I want to say, That's, enjoy this money, enjoy right. this what's happening to right. us. But right. he st he still works like a mule. Right. Because <laughs> it's like Hollywood. Who can depend on that? Even though it's going pretty well right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. He goes. This could go way tomorrow, Leanne. Right, you know, right, and right. it could. He's right. 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 
But it's, I mean, good Me and my wife, Shauna, could commiserate on that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, you don't understand. You're 65. I mean, how long are you going to be a fitness guru? You know, I don't know. So far, it's still going well. It this, is, you angel. Look at your The good folks who make power life seem to think it's, do, it's going all right. You know what I'm saying? So you're, you're a mom, three kids. You got the brand new grandson. Um, how, do you, how do your daughters feel about getting, um, being part of your, your act? They all right with um, that? Or? Everybody's okay with it. Now, when they were <laughs> in middle school, you know, children go through a terrible time in middle school. Middle school's a horrible time for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And I remember them saying, don't even come to the school. Like, you know, I'd be up there at their school all the time, up there, you know, talking and doing. I had a ball. But they would, they just did not want me to talk about them. I remember I was on the radio locally in Knoxville promoting a show or something. And well, I'm on the comedian in Knoxville, so they always had me on the radio. But anyway, I remember talking about Charlie going through puberty. And they had one armpit hair under this arm and nothing under this arm. And I was just talking out of my head. And, and they were already at school. And one of his friends had an orthodontist appointment and heard it and went to Charlie and said, your mom's talking about your puberty on WIVK. <laughs> and Charlie said, don't you ever. And so I shut that down and I mm. did not talk about them through middle school. That was a dry time for my career. Mm. To, when they were little, they were on Nick at Night and we talked, you know, I was on Funniest Mom in America and all that and they filmed them. They thought that was fun. Mm. Middle school dry. High school, they were like, we don't care what you do. We don't uh, even know who you are. Uh, <laughs> and then college, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they all, I mean, everybody's really enjoying it. Mm. And they're like, oh, mom, yeah, tell that. Remember that? Oh, wow. So yeah. they encourage you now. Yeah. And Chuck Morgan, people say, does your husband mind you talking about him? I go, no. He says, you need to tell him that. Tell him about the time I got arrested. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so we talk about. They're just I, waiting for the pit <laughs> where they get you talk about that. That's true. I used to be that guy, or your daughters are like, oh, yeah, we were that way, you know. Yeah. That's great, Yeah, that's great. And by the way, everybody who's looking in, they come to you after and go, that's my kid, that's my husband. Mm -hmm. that's, that's part of your success. I mean, just think if you were single, your act would be terrible. No. Oh, if I had <laughs> been 20, really, and come right. out here and tried to talk about, I would have talked about my thighs, I would have, I would have not had anything yeah, to talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, I really yeah. wouldn't your, have. Your audience would have been this big. Yeah. Now it's... Yeah, because you're talking to the boomers, right? I mean, yeah. you're a boomer, right? You're yeah. on the younger end of that. I'm, I'm at the cusp. Are you Gen, Gen X boomer? Yeah, I think I yeah, am. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm boomer 57. All the way. You know, you got, you got going later, but you've been at this for 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. How has the comedy changed? Like, we're, as you've gotten better and better and, you know, more time under your belt, et cetera, et cetera, where do you think you were maybe making some early mistakes? Like any comic, you can, you can know when you're getting the laughs or not. Do you punch up a joke? Do you try it again? Do you give it a different punchline? Mm -hmm. Or you just abandon certain things and just jump into something new and try new material? Because it's always that balance, right? Yeah, I do all that. I yeah. abandon some things, and um, but it takes a lot of work. You know, to work out material, let me tell you how I think it's changed. Now with, mm. with Netflix and streaming and social media putting my clips out, mm. you know, it took me 10 years to get my first 45 minutes. And I worked that wow. material, because you think about wow. Steve Martin. That's why I quit. I couldn't, I couldn't, I got 10 minutes, I got, you know, then I didn't have any. Yeah, you think about Eddie Murphy's first special and how long right. that took him. Mm. He didn't do another one till he was, I mean, lately, during the pandemic or something. Right. Steve Martin did that first 45 minutes that we all know. Yep. And then didn't do comedy for, because he said, I don't, I ran out of, you know, he wanted to write books and do other things. Mm. But it takes a long time to hone an egg. Now, right. Right. because you're putting it out all the time. They're like, you need to turn around a new hour in six weeks. So I came out here in January and worked in clubs and worked out my new hour for this new tour. So, so it's so different. Everything moves so much quicker. Mm -hmm. And you think about Jim Gaffigan has a new tour, a new special every year. I, I keep flipping. I go, I think we've already seen this. She goes, no, it's a new one. I mean, the last one was three months ago. I know. Like bang, 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 bang. It's, uh, it's Sebastian Moscolco. How many has he put out? Uh, I endless. Mean, Endless, endless, endless. And yeah. that's how the business is now. So it's, yeah, I think it's harder. That's harder than learning lines almost, I would think. It Dang. is, it's daunting, but yeah. then I, um, you know, somehow it have, I mean, it comes out, you get it. I've heard Tom Segura and different people talk about, oh, you think you're never gonna come up with a new hour and somehow you get it. Right. But right. I think that's, that has changed, but I'm a storyteller. So it takes me a long time right. to work. You have to have some life experience before you can start 
you have to ha you can't tell the story if you haven't experienced the story. Right. right. Like me, the thing that I think turned my career around was Def Leppard and Journey. I took my husband to go see Def Leppard and Journey, and I talked about all how old people look at concerts now, and everybody had plantar fasciitis, <laughs> and it and I had done that. Um, it took me a while, you know, to figure out little nuances and things I wanted to keep in there and what right. I, you know. Also, a bit that blew me up was me talking about my middle child that's sitting over there. And when she was 16, that we were scared to death of her and she was mean as a snake. And that's very normal for teenage girls right. to terrify their parents. Right. And I did that and, I, and it, that blew up. That got like 50 million views. And people would say to me, oh my gosh, that's my daughter. But I want to say that it was only just a short time in her life where we were scared to death. And I think that she was also worried about leaving home and she was scared and we were all, she wanted to be independent, but she was scared. So then um, now, I mean, she's my best friend and mm. calls me three times a day and takes mm. care of me and I'm like her baby. Mm. But that, that hit with people, you know, those, but you gotta have those experiences like going to Def Leppard and Journey, having those, whatever, you know, and me, for me, it's having a family. So I tell my team all the time, because they work me like a meal, and I tell them, I go, I gotta be able to get out here and go and go to the museum or go to CrossFit or go to Orange Theory or whatever mm. to have an experience to be able to talk about it and tell a story. Because I'm not like Jerry Seinfeld. Right. I can't say, oh, a cotton ball, I'm gonna write a bit. <laughs> I don't think yeah, that way. Right. You know, no. I just don't think that way. You know what's interesting, you know, just talking to you, like watching one of your, watching some of your bits online, you know, like you have your style is a story, your storyteller, you're clean, um, you talk about family. But one thing that I noticed, having had just a little bit of experience with comedy, is and tell me if I'm right or wrong, or maybe I'm observing this wrong. You're brilliant at throwing away the punchline. Like they're part of the sentence. Like you're in the sentence, like you're, you have punchlines in the middle of your setups, which is just, it's like, oh, it's a bonus laugh. I'm getting a bonus laugh here. And, and, and like you just zip right through them and then you keep going and then there's a punchline and maybe a tag or another tag. I mean, the people at home are like, what the hell is he talking about? But I think that's why, partly why there's that brilliance. Was that natural? Is that how you- I just think it, I'm talking out of my head. Is that yeah. how you, is, like, is, is that designed? You. Was that designed no. or did you just, were this way when you were 15 years old? Like, yeah. 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 So because you're, people you're ask a me born comedian then. It's like it was already in you, it was in your DNA. It seems I, like. yeah, well, I, a lot of people got a, you know, I went to Judy Carter's stand up comedy class. So, okay, the setup is very serious. And we're going to talk <laughs> about planting this tree. And at the end, you're going to talk about Himalayan salt. You know what I mean? Like that's, or the, what's the funny word? Words with K's. Okay, spatula, no K, but it seems <laughs> funny to me. And that, because we were thinking of spatula, Shauna goes, What's a spatula? You know, what is it? she goes, get the Rhode Island accent out of spatula, please. You know, it's like people wouldn't even know what the hell I was talking about. So for me, it was, you know, I was goofy and funny and, you know, stuff was coming out of my butt. And I was very animated because of the mime, you know, and the thing and the running out walking in place. But I needed the, I didn't have what you have naturally. It took me some time. And obviously it didn't pan out. But I ended up doing something <laughs> oh else. Oh my darn, you're very funny. Wow. But I wish I could say that I know the, because I know people who, who write like that mm. and they're brilliant. And I just don't have that. I'm, you know, where they do a put, set up a punchline, you know, a laugh, and they go, you need so many laughs a minute and all that kind of, I don't even know about that. I just get up there and talk about going skiing and, mm. you know, my ski instructor looked like Mitt Romney. And, <laughs> and there, well, there's a natural confidence in you. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I could, if you were in front of 30 people or 30,000, I get a feeling you'd, you'd be the, you wouldn't, I mean, you know, I get nervous a little bit, you know, I mean, there's that there, that there's that energy that I get to use, but it's I get funny. nervous every once in a while. But not as much, I bet. Not as mm. much with yeah. stand up. Yeah. yeah. But Hollywood stuff, I yeah. get nervous. Isn't that funny how? Or things I've never done before, you right, know. Right, But talking to people, I don't get, yeah. I was worried about doing a push up in front of you because I wanted you to think I was pretty. You were the whole Thank time. Thank you. You were the whole time. I wish I, I could show you pictures when Chuck Morgan fell in love with me and was telling me not to eat that fat and that potato. I was so Do you, cute. Do you understand? And my audience probably understands this as well. Is you, you know maybe in your 90s it'll be hard, but at your age, it's just a matter of finding the time, um, believing in the the method or the mentor or the whoever, 
and sticking, sticking with it. And then having good support system around you. You know, with me at my house, there's people at my house every day but one. I have, I have a mailing list as long as, as, long as your arm. Okay, so, uh, Ashley and Chase and Scott and Bobby will be, right? And then I, like I, I do ply on Wednesday nights. I invite 35 people because I hate that routine so much. The jumping and it's endless and it's 40 reps and 100 reps and it's just terrible. To do that on my own, I'm blown off. But if I invite 30 people, sometimes 12 will come. Usually it's three or four because they all know how miserable it is. So you know what I mean? And if it's online or at your house, you're on the road, it's tough. So you come up with other strategies and you and I will talk about those as well. And um, I do love a group fitness class. It's mm, easier to do it with people, oh, fun much and more music. So, much more so. And I love all that. I don't go to my gym now at home because I feel like people are looking at me and I never worried about that before, but like all mm. of a sudden I think they're like, oh, there's Leanne Morgan because I'm the only comedian in Knoxville. And, <laughs> and then I've got these tight britches on and you know, I feel like they can see my doings and I don't know. I just feel like they're like, oh do you, Lord. Do you, be, do you believe that the, that you can get there again? Yes. You have to believe. I do. You have to, I do. There's got to be faith. It's got to be do. belief. I do right? believe. Like if it's like, oh, uh, uh, think about the problems and the issues and the, and the stuff then you won't get there. But if you're like, you know, and it's hard to flip that on a dime. You know, you have to at some point go, okay, that's not serving me. I believe in this Tony Horton fellow because I look, you know, I look six and a half months younger than I actually am. I praise God that Weight Watchers doesn't have a limit on how many times you can join. Because <laughs> I've done Weight Watchers nine times and I've lost seven pounds and all. It's because I don't follow it. <laughs> and I know it works. I really do. I know it works, but I go more for the comedy <laughs> at the meetings. I don't know if y'all have ever been to a Weight Watchers meeting, but it is so funny. Okay. But, like everybody comes up with, with recipes. Like the other day we were there. And a woman goes, okay, if you put a teaspoon of cocoa and an egg white and put a dollop of water in it and pray over it and put it in the microwave, you've got chocolate cake. One more thing. And this is your opportunity to tell me and the people kind of, you know, how to find you. I know we've talked about it here, the Netflix special, uh, the tour. Uh, how can people find out about the tour and come see you uh, while you're on the road? Go to LeanneMorgan.com and it'll tell you all my dates and you click on those to get tickets. Don't go to a third party ticket, some voodoo. Um, Cause women will say, message and go, I bought a $700 ticket. And I'm like, girl, it doesn't cost you $700 to go see me. Go to LeanMorgan.com. It'll show all my, I've got a hundred cities coming up. We're about to announce a bunch for the fall and next spring. The book will be out in 2024. I'm on all social media. You are just amazing. I'm so, Thank this you, has Tony, been such a pleasure. You are, honey. Such a pleasure. Can you, I can tell you've got a sweet spirit and we bonded the minute we looked at each other. Older. <laughs> yes, I'm really a heathen. Um, no, but thank you so much. I, I, I do it because of my mother. She, she took care of me growing up. And you are just, I'm so thrilled for you at this stage. Thank you. I just, I, my hope and dream for you and everybody else who's looking and who's kind of struggling a little bit, you know, with the, with the thing, with the health and the wellness and the food and everything else. Just make that little turn. Believe it, have faith in that. And oh my God, it's going to be, you're already killing it. But That'll just make it easier for you. Make it make easier it. on me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I and I believe that, my darling. I believe that. And this just getting started tour. I'm just I just started this tour. I got a how lot many, of how dates. Many, how many cities total? Hundred. 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 And, and they just, add them. If I sell out, they add more. So it's not really a hundred. So how many have you done of the hundred? <laughs> oh, I just started in February. When, when's your next? So one? I mean, I've done like eight dates. Uh, how many here in Los Angeles area? Uh, that'll be next spring. They haven't added them yet. Oh, well. Can I get a good seat in that one? Yes, Tony. Can Horton. I come backstage and get a picture and an autograph? And I want you yes, and see. you come back and eat quinoa. That's what mm -hmm. I'll be eating. Blah. We'll find a good way to make that taste good. You are fabulous. 
I adore you. Thank adore you for being you. here on my little, my, my, on my my little show. Thank Everybody, you. Leanne Morgan, she is amazing. I'll see you next time. And if you want to see more great episodes with amazing guests like Leanne Morgan, click right anywhere where you see a place you can do it, all right? Point to my left. Right. I want to be an actress. I didn't know I could be a comedian. I didn't know I was funny. Why was six afraid of seven? I don't know. Why was six afraid of seven? This is nice and straight. One, two, three.